So you're in these small markets, like, you know, where do you see a cap rate in Toronto for the same type of property compared to something in Timmins? Well, you, you spoke about that sort of wall of capital earlier, or Jeremy might have spoken about that wall of capital that's out there, you know, the pension fund money and the, and, and the sort of the, the big ticket buyers. They're not looking for those tertiary market assets. The market for those types of buyers, or the buyers for that type of asset, it's a pretty narrow, um, it's a pretty narrow list of buyers. Whereas in the primary markets, it's actually a pretty deep uh, list of buyers. And, and I think you do have institutional money chasing uh, all types of assets within major markets, which means that the spread is bigger now than it's ever been. Uh, I think between tertiary market assets, especially those with hair on them, versus primary market assets. Can you just give us your opinion, since you know you do sell a lot of residential real estate, where you think cap rates are going sort of on the residential side, apartment building, major markets, the retirement side, and also the student housing side, because there's a lot of players now in student housing sort of changing the new format. Um, you know, where do you think those are going? So, um, I'll start with student housing uh, and, and tell you that I'm not... Um, really sure, for the simple reason that we don't have that many data points. Canada is way, way behind um, the U.S. in student housing, probably more so than in any other real estate asset class. But there's a ton of interest in it right now. Um, we had a conversation with one of the largest pension fund investors uh, in Canada, and they're, they're, they're buying student housing in, in big chunks in the U.K., they're buying it in big chunks in the U.S., and they want to do it in Canada. But um, they simply can't, there's just not enough product that's suitable. You know, there are, there are handfuls of newly created buildings. Uh, they're not huge portfolios of, of um, suitable stuff that's not university owned. Um, so I would say that that, that means fundamentally um, cap rates have to go down in that sector. Uh, I don't know how far they're going to go down and, and I really don't have enough data points to tell you where they're at right now compared to you know, we, we used to be able to say things like, oh, they're probably a point higher than multifamily. I don't actually know the answer to that one. Um, multifamily, uh, you and I had this conversation a week or so ago, Maury. Um, I can't believe I'm going to say it, but uh, I think multifamily cap rates can actually go lower for the simple reason that if you look at the spread over GOCs um, in the absolute peak of the market in 2007, it was way tighter than it is right now. Um, and so... Um, you know, if it goes back to that sort of percentage of base rate um, that it was in 2007, then cap rates can probably go half a point lower. So it's kind of astonishing to think about that because as, as you pointed out, uh, we're pretty routinely seeing um, cap rates in the fours in major markets. I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing cap rates in the fours in secondary markets. Um, and we are seeing cap rates in the threes uh, and that's on brokers numbers. So I don't know what it is in real numbers. Uh, let me start this answer by telling you that um, I, I bought apartments personally in tertiary markets, which is the, the only place I could afford them a number of years ago. And I, I grew up in a tertiary market, so I really understand these places. You lose your one employer and you're out of business. So um, I got really nervous when cap rates got down to seven and a half and I sold. Well, those things have sold two more times since. I think somebody in the room might own them. but. Um, uh, the, it's, it's just, uh, I, I continue to be amazed by how low uh, cap rates are going. So here's, here's what you, you know, a lot of you are apartment building owners. Um, when appraisers report cap rates, they report them on fictitious numbers. And when brokers sell apartment buildings, they sell them on fictitious numbers. And everybody knows that's not what you actually get. We wouldn't be able to make sense of trades if we didn't have sort of a standard way of looking at things. So when someone says it's a five cap, it's probably more like a four and a quarter cap. Um, but anyway, the motivations are, are many. Um, uh, I was asked a question today, there's a, a, a panel at, uh, for the apartment conference tomorrow that I'm speaking on, and one of the questions is, are there any value add opportunities left out there? Yeah, uh, if you add up the biggest 10 owners portfolios in Canada, they probably don't own 15% of the housing stock. Uh, it's absolutely incredible the consolidation opportunities that are out there, and most most buildings that you see sold have tremendous value-add opportunities in the hands of very large operators. Why? Because their materials costs are cheaper, they're very, very efficient managers, their, their, um, uh, their management infrastructure is uh, very, very effective. It's very hard for someone who owns a building to operate it as effectively as someone who owns 10,000 suites. That's a fact of life. So there are value-add opportunities for all those guys. 
Um, <clears throat> there's, um, in a lot of cases, uh, uh, scarcity value. Why do people buy at a four cap? Because they think that if they wait for it to become a six cap, they might be waiting forever. Um, the other aspect of it is, and there's a very, very wise man, one of the, probably the largest private owner of apartment buildings in Canada, um, and he says, I always overpay for apartments, but only for about two years. Pretty good wisdom. What I found uh, fascinating was that, um, first of all, um, the size of these uh, institutions, they wouldn't look at um, uh, their buys under, you know, four or five hundred million dollars, which suggested to us, these, these smaller players, that there is opportunity for us in, the, in, the, in, these, in these smaller uh, deals. Uh, I also like the fact that they were looking for uh, mismanagement in their, in, you know, a, as a way to, to buy because they felt that with proper management that they could um, reposition the asset and create value.